much. Oh. All right. All right, I gotta get this. Cheers. Cheers, my man. This handsome man is Bluffalo Sam. He is a fellow poker vlogger and the mastermind behind this impressive chip structure. He is always a pleasure to hang out with, whether it's talking about poker, filming, or life in general. Sam is just an all-around great dude. I am bidding him farewell before he takes off on a six-month-long road trip to visit poker rooms, I think mostly across the US. By the time this video is up, he will have already embarked on this journey, which all of you guys should follow because it's pretty crazy and super cool. Sam, if you're watching this, I hope you crush every poker room you visit, bring home that cash, and you can spread the love here. Good luck, my friend. Farewell to Buffalo Sam. <laughs>
so on this turn, I now decide to check for a pot control. The villain also checks, which is good news because I'm more certain now that I still beat him and could still bet the river. The river is a queen. That pretty much ruins my plan because now there really is no point of me betting anymore, as I don't think worse hands will call. My plan of value betting the river has now changed to check call. I check, and the villain also checks. I show my hand, and he mucks. This hand, I am under the gun plus one with pocket sixes. Under the gun raises $20, and I call the set mine. Low jack, high jack, and the blinds call, so we are six way into a flop of 668. That's right, I flop quads. In the four sessions that I have filmed for this channel, I hit quads in three of them. Anyways, everyone checks for the hijack who bets $70. Everyone folds and I just call. The turn is a five. All I'm thinking is how to extract the most value with the nuts, which is not that easy out of position. If I check, it's going to get checked back a lot. I decide to go for a small bet. If he has a full house and I coolered him, the money is going in there anyways, but I wanted to stay in with a hand like 8-7 or 5-7. I bet $50. He calls. The turn is a deuce of clubs, which completes the backdoor flush. I take a look at his stack and it turns out he doesn't have much left, only around $400. So I just decide to move all in, hoping he hits something. But that doesn't seem to be the case because he folds. This hand, I am under the gun plus one with queen 10 of spades. I open to $15, and the player to my left re-raises right away to $45. The small blind and big blind call, and I also call. The flop comes 873 with two spades. Everyone checks for the preflop raiser, who C bets for $75. The big blind calls, and I also call, with the flush draw and some backdoor straights. The turn is a deuce of hearts, and the big blind checks to me. The player to my left has been 3-betting and c-betting quite a bit, so I think it's possible he can have complete air like 2 high cards that miss a flop. The big blind doesn't seem that strong, checking with 2 people behind on a draw heavy board. He could have a weak pair, but called the flop because he has the same read as I do with the pre-flop aggressor. With this dynamic, I think my flush draw is a good hand to semi bluff in this spot. If my read is somewhat accurate, I should be getting folds most of the time. I bet $150, and both players fold. This hand, I am at the low jack position with ace eight of spades. It starts with a button straddle of $10. The big blind calls and the middle position calls. I raise it to $50. The button calls and the big blind calls, and the middle position folds. The flop comes jack jack nine with two hearts. Everyone checks. The turn comes an ace of hearts. The big blind checks, and even though I hit an ace, I opt to check for pot control. The button bets $80. The big blind folds, and I call. The river is a brick. I check. And the button bets $350. At this point, the only hands I can really beat are bluffs. If he had a 9 or ace, I think he would check it down. The flush also got there on the turn, and my hand unblocks hearts. I couldn't find any value hands that I beat, and don't have a lot of info about this player to decide whether he's capable of bluffing, so ultimately, I decide to let it go. This hand, I'm not even in it, but I wanted to share because my hand gets mucked by the player to my right, and I thought it was pretty funny. Right before the hand was dealt, I was chatting with the player, and he was telling the story of how someone's hand was mucked accidentally because that player didn't protect it. I am in the big blind with 4-5 offsuit. There was an open of $15 and 4 callers. I was about to join in as well, and then this happened. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, same thing you did. Yeah. They yeah. just went yeah. yeah. the card's yeah. mocked, buddy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we, were just, that right? we were just talking about that too, man. I, I'm sorry, I... I, I it's, it's, it's on his big head. <laughs> you you want to play that? I, I didn't want to play that. <laughs> So let that be a lesson to everyone playing live poker. Remember to protect your cards, and don't be dumb like me. Here are the results of this episode. I bought in for $1,500, 
and I cashed out for $1,882. That is a profit of $382, and the results will be displayed uh, right here. Thank you for watching this episode. I hope you look forward to the next. Goodbye.